Welcome back to the RPG Maker MV Tutorial Series Level 2. Last time we looked at how to make a simple quest, now let's look at connected quests that flow through to each other. Let's make a game! So here we are back in RPG Maker MV. Now before we get into it, let's look at what we're going to be making today. So if you recall in the previous episode, we had a quest where we harvested some carrots. Now we've harvested those carrots and we're just looking at this little boy up here. He's not doing anything just yet, so let's go back and complete this quest. Let's see if you've harvested all my carrots. You picked all the carrots. Thanks for your help. And now, our little boy has a new quest. Okay, his pet has escaped from his pen. Thanks, take this slime catcher and please don't hurt him. Oop, slime blobs towards you. What do you want to do? We catch the slime. He's questioning whether the things are complete. Caught slimy. Okay, you can keep the slime catcher, maybe it will help you in the future. You get an empty slime catcher jar. And he's back in his pen. You pat slimy, fondly recalling your short adventure together, then wipe the goo off your hands. Yuck. And that's what we're going to do today. Right, so here we are back in RPG Maker, and... Uh, if you recall, at the end of the last uh, episode, we actually triggered a quest complete switch. So, Q1, quest 1, complete, is on. And that is what happens at the end of our quest 1, the first quest series. So let's take advantage of that switch, and what we're going to do is we'll take our, uh, our NPC, we'll call him Q2, the quest 2 for boy, and we'll add a new page by copying this page and pasting. We'll set the switch to be Q1 complete. So that means that once this uh, once Q1 is complete, this page will then activate. Other than that, otherwise he will stand around and he'll just say, "I'm a random villager." So the first thing he'll need to say is something like, "Help my pet slimy escape from his pen. Can you help me catch him, please?" And now we might say something like, sure, I'll help, or sorry, I'm scared of slimes. Uh, if you say, sorry, I'm scared of slimes, he'll just say, I think, oh, I guess I'll have to find a real hero, and cry. If you say, sure, I'll help, he'll say, thanks, take this slime catcher, and please don't hurt him. Now we need to make a slime catcher item. So, close down our vent, go to database, click on items, we go down to quest items, and we set up slime catcher empty, emptied glass jar, Empty jar designed for catching slimes, regular item, we'll call it say 10, consumable no, scope none, occasion never, and we'll also set up a slime catcher full, with a full jar icon, a jar designed for catching slimes, it's currently full of slime, regular item, let's call it 50, because why not slimes are worth something, consumable no, none, never. Click OK. Now back in our NPC, we can go back to, thanks, take the slime catcher and please don't hurt him, can now change items, set that to a an empty slime catcher, scrolling down here, increase by one, and we can play a sound effect. can play some text that says you got a slime catcher, that might be in the middle of the screen and dim, just to give it a bit of a separate vibe. And last but not least, we're going to set up a new variable. So I'll circle control variables, and we will set this to Q quest 2 and we'll call it quest 2 stage. We'll set that to stage 1. And now we can set, we can copy this page, we can set a new page uh, by pasting it. Just delete that. Now we can do a new event page. So we'll copy this current event page, we'll paste it, that gives us the icon and everything else. We'll just delete this stuff and we'll change the switch to a variable. Now the variable is going to be Q2 stage and this is quest 2 stage 1 so that will now be at quest 2 stage 1 this page will activate. Now with the variables you can only do greater than or equal to as your options there so we're going to do a quest 2 stage 1 greater than or equal to which means that every other page to the right of his so the higher pages have to be a higher number on the variable or else they will uh, get triggered first. So if you come back and talk to him uh, after you've accepted the quest, he'll now say, have you caught my pet slime yet? 
And for this relatively simple quest series, we're just going to give ourselves the option to say not yet, and he's going to say please hurry and please don't hurt it. So what does that give us so far? Let's have a quick look. Okay, now we can't do anything because he's still a random villager. So let's just set up a little cheat for ourselves. So I've made a simple switch that uh, just simply goes control switch Q1 complete is on and then switches itself into a blank mode. So let's hit play and now what we can do is we can say this quest 1 is complete now he'll say help my pet slimy escape from his pen can you help me catch him please. Sorry I'm scared of slimes guess I have to find a real hero. I'll ask again. Thanks, take this slime catcher and please don't hurt him. You got a slime catcher. Have you caught my pet slime yet? Not yet. Please hurry and please don't hurt him. So the next step is to create our slime. So let's come in here, set a starting position. I might just get rid of the old lady. Now let's create a pen for the slime. We use F5 to go back to mapping mode and we're going to use a little trick where we can use a table to create a somewhat interactive section of the map. It lets, us it lets us interact with objects that are on the other side of it. Now we'll switch back to event mode and we'll create a new event. Let's call this Q2 underscore slimy, so that's quest2 slimy and we'll give it a slimy character. We'll set it moving to random so he can wander around in this little pen. We'll set this so that if you click on it, it says you see a slimy bob scratching around the corner. Is this someone's pet? Let's just test that out. So here we are, we're in the house, we come in and we see you see a slimy bob scratching around the corner. Is this someone's pet? There we are. Now we want to set it such that at stage one of this event, Slimy disappears. So when variable Q2 stage is at one or more, Slimy will not be here. And that is because Slimy is going to be outside of the pen when Q when the um, event kicks in. So what we're going to do is we'll have a new event page. We'll just copy this one, pass that event page. I'll delete this one real quick. So now we've got a blank. So when nothing's happening, this is going to be blank. But when quest 2 stage 1, quest 2 is at stage 1, then slimy is going to be outside. To make it clear that this is slimy out, we'll just put out over here and we'll delete this one. At this point, Slimy is going to rapidly approach the player. So we'll put it at highest and we'll move him at normal speed and we'll set it to event touch. Then we'll say something like, when the, when the event touches the player or the player touches the event, we'll say something like, the slime blobs towards you, what do you want to do? Now this time around, we're not going to give the player any choice. They're just going to say, catch it with the slime catcher. Uh, you could always add a second choice of kill it for example, but this time we'll just be nice. So let's play a sound effect when you go to catch it. Uh, we'll make it something fun like the P for poison. That's a good sound effect for catching a slime. Then we're going to change items. First we will remove the empty slime catcher and then we will add a full slime catcher. We'll say something like you catch the slime and then what we're going to do is control the variable of quest 2 stage and we're going to set that to stage 2. Now at stage 2 we want Slimy out to disappear. So we'll just set that again. And then we head back outside. We want to 
copy the the voice page. We want to set that to stage two now. Now you've caught slimy, so the boy might say something along the lines of, "You caught slimy, thanks." Uh, he might have some kind of balloon icon over this event. There's an um, exclamation or a musical note. We'll wait for completion on that. Now the boy might take the slime jar and put slimy back in his pen. That will of course make a gluggy noise and it will change items and will decrease slime catcher by one because it's been removed. Slimy of course says glub glub but the boy being generous might say something like you can keep this slime catcher maybe it will help you in future. We'll now change items and this time we'll increase empty slime catchers. Maybe you can use it in a dungeon. In the middle of the screen we'll display something like you get an empty slime catcher jar and now we will change the variable for the quest to set it to stage 3. We'll once again copy the event page and paste it. Delete all this. We'll set the boy to moving around the village at random again. This will be stage 3. Now he might say something, if you encounter him, he might say something like Thanks for catching Slimy for me, you're my hero. Uh, he might have a balloon icon, musical notes, this event. And now we just need to show what Slimy will be doing well after he's been caught. So now, Slimy in will be back in his pen. So Q2 stage note, he's out. And so now we can simply copy the first event page, can paste it after the second one. We can set the variable to be Q2, so quest 2 stage, and it's stage 3 or more. And now we might say something like, you pat Slimy fondly recalling your adventure together. Slimy of course says something like, glub glub, with an appropriate slimy sound effect. And we can close it off with something like, then wipe the goo off your hands, yuck. That's the end of our slimy adventure. Now all we want to do is set some exclamation marks up so that we can tell that it is a quest. So uh, if you recall we had our, from our previous um, episode, we had map events set up in the corner so that we would show when quest 1 complete is off, i.e. when quest 1 is not complete, Carrot Lady will show an exclamation mark. Uh, now what we want to do is just ed edit this by pressing space. We create an else branch. So if it is so if if it's off, then show that. Otherwise, if it is on, then let's do something else. So what we want to do is we do a conditional branch variable, and if Q2 stage is equal to zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to show the balloon icon on the Q2 boy. So what that means is that quest 1 is complete but quest 2 hasn't started yet. The boy will be showing an exclamation mark to um, encourage the player to come and talk to them. Now we want to just give it a short break in between there so we'll add a wait and you might put it to 120 frames, 2 seconds and then we need to have an else. So we'll create an else branch This else will also be a conditional branch, and it will be if quest stage, uh, if quest two stage is less than three, then the boy will show a question mark balloon icon. So that's Q2 boy show a question mark. Now that encourages and we'll add wait 20, 120 frames. Now what that does is that says that I have a quest available and then this will just say hey I still got a quest but you haven't finished it, what's going on? And that should be everything that we need. Let's test it out. So, press play. We can see he's just a random villager. 
That's because we haven't completed the first quest. Let's use our magic complete the first quest switch. Now we can see he's dragging our attention with an exclamation mark. Sure, I'll help. Thanks. Take this slime catcher and please don't hurt him. You got a slime catcher. Okay, now if we talk to him, have you caught slime yet? Not yet. Please hurry and please don't hurt him. And slimy comes towards us. What are we going to do? We'll catch him. He's still got the question mark because he wants to know what's going on. You caught slimy. Thanks. Glove, glove. You can keep this slime catcher. Maybe it will help you in future. There we go. And now the boy is going to be walking around. If we talk to him, he'll say thanks for catching slimy for me. You're my hero. And if we go and talk to this, well, I don't have a look at slimy. Pat Slimy, finally recalling your adventure together. Glove, glove. Then we'll have to go off your hands. Yuck. And that is the end of our Slimy quest. There's just one more thing you might like to do if you're having trouble keeping track of what stage of the quest this is at, and you want to keep, uh, you want to understand how things are working. Just at the top, you can uh, put quest stage and do a backslash v, and the number of the variable that we used to change the quest. So this is, in this case, it's actually, it is quest 2 stage. And that's variable number 3. So we can see quest stage uh, slash v and square brackets number 3 and that will show you the current um, value for quest stage. And so that can be really handy if you're trying to figure out, um, if you're trying to put, piece all this together and you want to figure out what stage you're at. Um, it's just a sort of a debugging thing. So you can put that in there and then that way when you press play and you talk to the boy, he'll tell you you're at quest stage zero. Miranda Villager. Flip this. You're still at quest stage zero. Okay. And now you're at quest stage one. Okay, now if you go and talk to... go and activate Slimy. Now you're at quest stage two. You caught Slimy. Thanks. Slimy's back. And now you're at quest stage three. And that's really handy if you want to um, if you want to help yourself to understand where you are along the process here, uh, because the variable method of um, updating stages can get a little bit tricky. Well, that brings us to the end of the quests tutorials. Um, we've almost finished level 2 in fact, so just a few more to go. Next episode we'll look at the dungeon generator and uh, expanding our dungeons. See you in the next one. That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider smashing those like and subscribe buttons as they do help with the algorithm. Now it's your turn to go make a game. See you in the next one.